Broken doesn't have to mean hopeless. Don't Move is a Netflix original produced by Sam Raimi. It was directed by Brian Netto, who did Delivery the Beast Within, as well as Adam Schindler, who did Intruders. And this was written by T.J. Simphill, who did Intruders, as well as VHS Viral, Oh Boy, and There's Something Wrong with the Children. Oh Boy! God, that should have been a fucking indication to just skip this goddamn thing. Let's get to it, let's get to it, because there's one more writer. That's right. Two directors. Two writers. Ha! Ah! Anyway, David White, he did VHS Viral as well as Intruders. By the way, that is Intruders 2015, a.k.a. the one that Clive Owen wasn't in. So you have Kelsey Asbel, who is going through a lot of shit. She's going to go on a hike, and she's not dealing with a certain event that took place in her life. And she's just up to get away, just get away from it all up in the mountains. And then she has a chance encounter with a man named Richard, played by Finn Whitrock, who is an AHS freak show. Um, he played Darcy, by the way. He's a very good actor. He plays a really good creep. I do want to say, and you actually need to go back and rewatch AHS Freak Show at some point. Anyway, a chance encounter basically turns into a fight for her life. Basically, Kelsey is bound and determined as Iris to get away from Richard because Richard ends up kidnapping her, injecting her with a paralyzing agent, and now she has 20 minutes to find a place to hide safely until it wears off or she's fucked. That's your premise right there. Now, that sounds like a decent premise. And there are a few neat little scenes, and I do want to say that Kelsey does a pretty good job as Iris, and Finn is nice and creepy as Richard. The problem is, or rather one of the problems on top of the pile of problems that this film continues to just, you know, throw things on and then eventually set on fire and build another pile of problems. And I didn't hate this movie as much as a lot of stuff I've seen this year, but so much wasted potential. The thing is, is this film is like 35 minutes of material for a short film stretched out to 92 minutes. <laughs> there are parts where it's like, okay... We can have some increasingly, you know, uh, silly parts, you know, to stretch believability because in a horror movie you need that. The problem is there's nobody really worth rooting for. I mean, Kelsey is does fine here as Iris, but you don't really want to root for her character. Richard is a goof. You have to wonder how he's gotten away with any of this shit based on the fact that he, you know, he he's apparently seasoned, yet he's also just absolutely fucking stupid and not believable. Anytime he tries to explain any situation away with any of the chance encounters of anybody that happens uh, upon his path. You have to wonder how in the world he was able to get out of bed without straight up saying, I'm a murderer! So, look, the movie isn't the worst I've seen, but so much waste of potential actually made me really start to hate. And I was really starting to hate about halfway through. <laughs> because... At first, you understood what they were doing. Like, okay, they built up some nice stuff. There was a nice interaction between Richard and Iris while they were staying on top of a mountain, you know, uh, some mountainous rock, some wit rock, as it were. <laughs> and, yes, it does have that element of, okay, a woman needing to fight for her life and, you know, men wanting to control women and that kind of stuff. And that, that would have worked. The thing is, it worked a lot better in Revenge. And there were also elements of that in Strange Darling, even if that was uh, definitely a twisted fucking movie. This is stripped down, and again, just a short film concept stretched out to a fucking full-length feature without enough meat and material and just a bunch of goofiness to where the rails, you know, the wheels basically come off, it goes off the goddamn rails, whatever thing you want to go with, it just gets pretty goddamn ridiculous. I'm going to get into spoilers, by the way. It's on Netflix if you want to check it out. Three, two, one, and spoilers. So, basically, Iris goes up to this cliff because it's it's where her, it, you know, there's a little thing where she carves something and, you know, it turns out that her son died. She didn't watch where her son was going. Her son died. And she basically wants to end her life. Richard shows up and tells the story about his wife, how he, um, you know, how he was in traction for a while. He felt helpless, but then he felt like living. It's like you know, Clarence, I want to live again. And that's a nice scene actually, because look, we've all been down the dumps at that point, even though many of us have not actually blocked somebody like that. And Kelsey does a good job as far as you know showing the pain and the conflict and just the the horror and the anguish she does a good job with that and then 
you know, they are going to part ways, but he parks conveniently too close to her. <laughs> and then, well, he ends up ba uh, basically shock sticking her uh, with an umbrella slash, um, you know, like, like taser. I don't really know how else to describe it. And yeah, during um dur during the ensuing um you know drive back to whatever lair he has, seemingly a cabin somewhere in the California woods, she ends up managing to get <clears throat> um enough of an advantage to have him crash his uh, Subaru Forester. But in this fracas, he ends up injecting her with a paralyzing agent, and she <laughs> now has twenty minutes basically to find a place to hide. Now, that would uh, indicate in, in kick in your fight or flight reflex, and the more you run, the quicker it works, because it basically paralyzes everything about you. She ends up in the river, he doesn't know what the fuck to do, and he um, and she ends up washing up on the riverbank. Now, remember that scene. She ends up um, in the yard of a guy <clears throat> that basically is um, <clears throat> an older man that is mowing, stops to find her, and holy shit, she's blinking as a way to communicate, <clears throat> which I think is kind of neat. I mean, even though that's been done before. He's going to bring her in a wheelbarrow and call 911. <clears throat> and Richard shows up panic, pretending that that's his wife and everything, looking for his wife and all that. The old man, Bill, <clears throat> uh, Maury Treadwell, by the way, who does fine in his role, he's smart enough to recognize that Richard is not exactly believable. <clears throat> and... They talk about their respective wives, like the fact that, you know, Bill may have been a bit abusive, but he's also got that old man strength and overpowers Richard at some points. Well, <clears throat> meanwhile, Iris is laying under the table and Bill ends up getting stabbed, basically. <clears throat> so that's not working all, that's not, you know, exactly working out properly for Bill. He probably shouldn't have brought the lady in the house, but he couldn't leave a woman um, <clears throat> in distress, and yeah, then Richard just decides to burn down the goddamn house, literally, he just has a gas can and burns down the house, <clears throat> more on that in a bit, because it gets a little funnier, so, the fire effects, by the way, are absolutely terrible, granted, the budget was probably pretty goddamn small, <clears throat> and she ends up, um, <clears throat> getting taken by him, we have um, the conversation where Richard is talking to his daughter. Hey, Mom says we're coming up to the cabin. We never actually get to see them, by the way, just want to say. So they go to the gas station, or rather Richard does, and her motor skills are gradually coming back. Like her fingers are kind of going like this and everything, and it's you know going to gradually come back, but it's going to take a bit. It took an hour to wear off, or start wearing off. But she go, or he goes to the gas station, <coughs> pays for gas, by taking Bill's truck, by the way. And the kid is looking at her, like, wondering what the hell is going on. And she has a flashback, thinking that uh, reminded her of her son. And then, while trying to tow his vehicle off the goddamn road that has been left there, and it's like, okay, I need to tow it off, you know, from here, because my family's going to spot it, and also the police might spot it. And I'm really, really bad at covering my tracks. The police show up, and he recognizes that Things are totally goddamn fucked. She basically whispers, help me, because her voice is starting to come back. And then Richard, instead of talking his way out of this, decides to beat the shit out of the cop with the goddamn uh, tow hook, which was kind of hilarious. And, yeah, then he torches the cop's car. Did he have time to fill another gas can, or was there one in there? You know, it's fine. What? Whatever. It, it's fine. And then they have another talking scene <clears throat> where he talks about seeing his wife dying, which might actually, who knows, he might have actually been making that up the whole damn time because he's got another wife and a kid and, oh, you don't want to leave your daughter alone. I know what it's like to lose a kid. And <clears throat> then she tries to inject him because he had another needle, another paralytic thing he was going to inject her with. She was going to inject him. She just didn't have enough strength, enough burst of energy to hit the thing. <clears throat> So he took it out, squirted the thing out, and that's it. They go into the boat. He's going to drown her. And speaking of boats, she actually had a little toy boat that her son used to have that she put there in the little tribute thing for all the victims. <clears throat> they have fallen to their death like their Darby Allen. And if you get that reference, I love you guys. <laughs> and they're in the boat. 
she says, can you do me one favor? Can you get Mateo's boat out? Mateo is the name of her son. <clears throat> so he does, or he goes to the other side. And then she manages to get the knife out of his pocket and stab him in the goddamn neck. And it was one of those hook knives, too. So, <clears throat> yeah. If it had gone straight through and not hit an artery, it might have been okay. But no, he's fucked. And he also has a gun. She manages to shoot him, despite her hands being tied. But, oh yes, the boat is also sinking. So she's drowning, except she's not. And then she sees uh, Richard climbing up on the goddamn bank, just like she was, all helpless before. And then she kneels on his neck... I wouldn't mind that treatment. I, I, I kid, I kid, of course. <clears throat> and says, thank you, and then leaves. And says, you don't owe me. Don't try to uh, change me in any way. And This movie owes me an apology for wasting a pretty good concept. Like, I didn't expect much from this, and I thought that the premise was going to run thin, and it did. There are some neat little scenes. The acting isn't bad, and there are a couple good scenes, <clears throat> but that doesn't help the fact that this movie is aggressively dull for most of the time and it just gets ridiculous and not in a good way not in oh yeah iris kick his ass like no this is like <clears throat> if you're going to try to ground something in a little bit of a reality at least have the courage to stick with it but nevertheless f i'm sorry f it just doesn't work plus again it involved people that were that were involved in the writing process of VHS Viral, and one of them that did there's something wrong with the children, which I want to say right now is one of the worst fucking movies of the decade, at least one of the worst horror movies of the decade, one of the goddamn biggest piles of shit. And if you've seen it, check out my review of it, because I got some flack for it on social media. That being said, F, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rickland. I'll see you soon.